So 2022 was a momentous year in the fight against climate change. We sat down with our team at Fifth Wall and asked them what they thought were some of the most memorable moments throughout the year, the good and the bad. Just the beginning of 2022, a massive wildfire near Boulder, Colorado. It's as many as 1,000 homes burned, leaving families homeless to start 2022. Tonight, the destruction is catastrophic. As fast-moving infernos raged across Colorado, more than tripling in size in less than 24 hours. Tearing through residential neighborhoods near Boulder like a blowtorch, fueled by intense 100-mile-an-hour winds. One of the things that made me kind of excited uh, was don't look up. It encourages people to go look up themselves and educate themselves about things within climate change that they may not have done otherwise. Uh, uh, There's a 100% chance that we're all going to die. Well, the handsome astronomer can come back anytime, but the yelling lady, mm, not, so not so much. A massive winter storm is sweeping across most of the country today. It's closing down interstate schools. Winter storm landed. By 2050, moderate flooding is expected to occur more than 10 times as often. We're going to review and reset the oil and gas leasing program. The maximum size in the winter has been declining at a pace of about 13% per decade. Coming from Slovakia, living basically on the border with Ukraine, the Russian invasion is probably the thing that shocked me the most this year. The Russian president says a military operation is now underway in eastern Ukraine. The uncertainty in the region threatening to catapult already steep energy prices sky high. This set back society and uh, politics by 75 years. The talk of nuclear holocaust, it, I think it's scary and I frankly uh, don't know how to deal with it. Uh, puts the whole climate problem into perspective, you know. Violent storms and terrifying tornadoes tearing into the southeast, pushing vicious winds, ripping apart structure. The cactus may be reaching its limit. We're going to rejoin the Paris Climate Accord as of today. U.S. Department of Energy has finalized new rules to phase out older incandescent light bulbs. Probably the climate event that affected me the most this year is the West Coast drought. We're in the middle of you know, a thousand year drought on the West Coast of America. Just looking out of my window at the trees in our garden, seeing them get more and more and more decrepit by the day, which is very visceral and very depressing. In my view, we've already waited too long to deal with this climate crisis. Carbon dioxide levels now at the highest ever. This week, Governor Gavin Newsom signed groundbreaking legislation to cut back single-use plastics and boost recycling for what's left. This law would also make plastic manufacturers cover the cost of recycling instead of you, the taxpayer. Tonight, wildfires are ripping through Europe and parts of Northern Africa. In Spain, 17 fires are raging across the country and thousands are frantically fleeing their homes. The beautiful monarch butterfly is in danger of becoming extinct. Heavy rainfall causing major flash flooding. So for me, the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, was truly game changing. This completely changes the trajectory of deployment and development of clean energy technologies in the U.S. For the first time ever, green hydrogen production will be cheaper than natural gas. And that's huge, especially for some of our portfolio companies. Simply put, the Inflation Reduction Act is the most historic legislation any country has taken on climate. Between the $369 billion IRA and the bipartisan infrastructure law, there is now over half a trillion dollars in government funding available for new, clean energy investments. Another big announcement this year is California's announcement that they're going to ban all gas vehicles by 2035, I believe. This has huge implications for not only emissions reduction, but the general economy as well. One thing that really concerned me in climate tech news this year was the terrible flooding in Pakistan. It destroyed lives, families, livelihoods, and the country's economy in many ways. And unfortunately, natural disasters like this are becoming all too common. A severe flooding in Pakistan turned roads into rivers, leaving more than half the country submerged in water. 
His family transferred ownership of Patagonia to a trust and nonprofit organization created to funnel all of the apparel company's profits to fight climate change and defend nature. It, it's this type of action that really shows us the scale and scope of, of what is possible in responsible capitalism uh, and inspires all of us to continue to do as much as we can in the face of this uh, tremendous issue. This morning, the governor of Puerto Rico describes the damage from Hurricane Fiona as catastrophic, with more than 18 hours of torrential rain. One of the strongest September hurricanes to strike the U.S. in decades. President Biden announced the awards for the bipartisan infrastructure loan, and that's about a $2.8 billion program to support domestic supply chain and manufacturing. And this is really cool because one of our portfolio companies called Ascend Elements, who does battery recycling in the U.S., was awarded one of the biggest grants at $480 million. A new report has shown that wildlife populations have fallen by nearly 70% since 1970. The Cielo ran his campaign promising progressive ideals, like cracking down on illegal deforestation and making Brazil's indigenous people a priority. Today in a handshake, President Biden suggested historic tensions could begin to thaw. And Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry will coordinate with his counterpart at the ongoing COP27 Climate Summit. The global population is projected to hit an all-time high on Tuesday, reaching the landmark figure of 8 billion people. Nuclear scientists call it the holy grail of clean energy. If we had fusion, we could drop fossil fuels immediately and forever, right? It would be game over. We would have all the energy we needed, more than all the energy we needed. A, a decision came down from the California Public Utility Commission, which drastically changes the net metering policy beginning in April 2023, which means that the economics for residential solar customers will be significantly worse than in the past. So you heard from a lot of people about why climate was such an important topic in 2022. I mean, this is one of the most existential, generational challenges any humans have ever faced. And so reflecting on the last year, I think can give us a lot of perspective for what to do going forward.